Shelley. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> He's not Cedric. No. Uh, Bill, on Veterans Day, thank you for your service. I did not realize you'd been in the military. I guess those were in the days when you could get in with GED. <laughs> Uh, Roy Adams. Roy, I think everybody knows you're here, but give away so they can see you. There you go. Roy is a longtime Tennessee fan, uh, but more recently has been elected president of the local chapter of People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. You may notice the absence of his coonskin cap. Uh, Peter discourages wearing animal skins, especially ugly ones. <laughs> Coach Jones, it was just last uh, September or October, you were here as head coach of Cincinnati. Uh, now you're at Tennessee and the football program appears to be improving and heading in the right direction. I, for one, am really, really pleased for you. Not all lateral moves work out so well. <laughs> That was low. A, uh, a big Tennessee fan recently told me that Butch, B-U-T-C-H, put the U-T back in Tennessee football. I don't know if that's an original uh, line, but it's, uh, it's a pretty good one. Maybe not as creative as you can't spell citrus without U-T, but still a pretty good line. <laughs> As you probably remember from being here last year, uh, members of the Touchdown Club represent a number of different college football allegiances. And we like to tease one another about our respective alma maters. But we don't denigrate the fans of anything. What, who, who, who are your fans? Uh, in New York University. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is, I'm a South Carolina grad. Uh, but as I was saying before I was, before I was uh, interrupted, while we, uh, we like to tease one another about our respective alma maters, we don't denigrate the fans of any school. Uh, for the Alabama and Auburn folks here, denigrate means to put down. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, speaking of Alabama, I do have one suggestion. Coach, if you're going to uh, say something about Alabama that makes them feel disrespected, then say something disrespectful in the first place. <laughs> Calling them the red team is like trying to insult an elephant with a BB gun. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Plus, and this is not a criticism, it doesn't look like it works. <laughs> Now, for next year, I can suggest a half dozen more disrespectful names for Alabama. Maybe next year a variation on the artist formerly known as Prince, called in the football team formerly known as On Probation. <laughs> or maybe call their art offense Barnes and their defense Noble. You know, for a while the Alabama football team was like Barnes & Noble, only Amazon sold more books. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Uh, speaking of Alabama, they're very good. The Alabama-LSU game lived up to its height for just over two quarters. And despite losing, Coach Miles is still an innovator. He developed a new offensive strategy to confuse Alabama, the no-look snap. <laughs> and in other football news, the uh, University of Memphis has resolved its exit fee from Conference USA. Instead of paying the original $6.6 .6 million fee, the U of M assigned its share of future NCAA basketball tournament money, which is calculated using a six-year rolling average going back to the Calipari days. Now, the commercial appeal described the payout as zero, but that's not quite accurate because they're giving up money from the NCAA. It's more like an Arkansas fan agreeing to have his wages garnished and applied to his note on, the, on his double wide. 
<laughs> Speaking of Arkansas, do you know what you call an Arkansas graduate without a wife or a girlfriend? Homeless. <laughs> Back to uh, back to Memphis. Uh, the University of Memphis uh, must still pay 2.5 million dollars uh, as a fee to enter what used to be called the Big East, uh, but they've worked out a creative way to do that also. Kroger will actually replace Memphis as a member of the AAC at the end of the football season. Pay the 2.5 million and license the right to play football, basketball, and other sports back to the University of Memphis for $5 a game. Uh. <laughs> there, was a, there was an interesting article in last Thursday's USA Today about Clemson's coach, Dabo Sweeney, trademarking his name. He wants a separate licensing agreement added to his contract. And of course, coaches can do this, but uh, college players can't market their names, or generally, and they generally have to sign releases, uh, giving the colleges the right to do that. Ironically, one of Clemson's quarterbacks is a plaintiff in a lawsuit against the NCAA challenging uh, the use of athletes' names and likenesses. Now, what's really interesting about this to me is, so far as I know, this is the first time a Clemson athlete has appeared in court under the title plaintiff. <laughs> Speaking of Thursday's USA Today, that was a nice photo of you, Coach, uh, in the article about your Cincinnati buyout. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that coaching in the SEC can be taxing, but I always thought that was just an expression. Uh, the article, for those of you, of you who have not read it, which appears to be about 90% of you, <laughs> focus on the practice of whether a uh, college paying a buyout fee on behalf of a coach uh, can be excluded from the coach's income as a non-taxable reimbursed business expense. Uh, I've spent my career as a tax lawyer, and it's a, it's a fascinating question from a tax perspective. Uh, but fortunately, that kind of question is not even on the IRS's radar, <laughs> unless they happen to read Thursday's uh, USA Today. <laughs> but, but I wouldn't worry, because it's only the third largest subscription uh, newspaper in the country. <laughs> now, before we bring you up to speak, uh, we do have a little thing we've been doing for several years with the SEC office. Uh, we do it each year when whomever is coaching at UT that year uh, comes to the touchdown. <laughs> touch it's, uh, it's just a, a list the league office puts together for us about the good things and the occasional bad things uh, that happen on the coaches' watch that year. We just call it the naughty and nice list. Usually it's a little closer to Christmas when the UT coach is here, but we thought it'd still be fun tonight. First, the nice list. <laughs> coach Jones, nice list. Ah, this is pretty good. I've not looked at this in advance. <laughs> the nice list. Restored energy and enthusiasm for UT football. No known recruiting violations, secondary or otherwise. Has not accused any other SEC coaches of cheating. No UT players indicted, arrested, or convicted under Coach Jones' watch. <laughs> yeah. 2014 recruiting class currently ranked second by several services. Whoa. Upset a top 10 team, South Carolina. which had not been done uh, at UT since Lane Kiffin upset South Carolina in 2009. As a lifelong South Carolina fan, I'm just kind of tickled anyone beating us is considered an upset. And, uh, <laughs> and finally, uh, allows UT students to leave their seats at Neyland Stadium at the time of their choosing. <laughs> or bathroom breaks, or to go home without fear of reprisal or dismissal. 
That's funny. Now, the naughty list. And just to show you, we take this thing seriously. <laughs> this was Coach Kiffin's naughty list. Uh, volume one. This, uh, this ran from his higher day through June. And of course, Coach Kiffin's list, volume two, which ran from June through his unexpected departure from the University of Tennessee. So now, let's take a look at uh, Coach Butch Jones' naughty list. Empty. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Nothing in the naughty list. Coach, if uh, you don't get busy, it's going to be a lot harder for me to be funny about UT next year. So I would appreciate just a little bit of misbehavior. Thank you very much. <laughs>